Good morning, everyone. We are very happy to be here together this morning with this extraordinary opportunity to speak to Maestro Andrea Bocelli, an extraordinary artist. Yesterday, we had the great privilege to listen to his music, and today, we have the privilege to share with him some ideas. Maestro Bocelli, grazie. Maestro Bocelli, thank you very much uh, for giving us this uh, opportunity to speak to you. I think that what's interesting is uh, that we are meeting here today to talk about opportunities, particularly for those who have to overcome difficulties and barriers in life. But I didn't want to talk about barriers. I wanted to speak about an extraordinary story, which is your story, and which uh, will help us uh, to understand what it means to, to address life uh, in a different uh, way and uh, to be able to uh, turn problems into opportunities. I think that uh, you have actually faced uh, nothing but challenges Challenges. But I think uh, that uh, they were challenges for you since you were a kid, because challenges uh, were you for you that you really wanted to overcome. Is that true? Yes, I have a bad uh, character, so to speak. First of all, let me say that I am a bit surprised every time I see a large audience that comes to listen to me, but I'm even more surprised when there are people that come to listen to what I say. <laughs> Well, you know, at home, for instance, very often, you know, because I am a, a father, and so I preach, and my children say, shut up. I'm not sure if I can believe you, really. I think it's perhaps the destiny of all parents. So let's talk about challenges. The challenges are a way of life. I don't consider them challenges. I don't think they are challenges. Life is a gift, an extraordinary gift, of which you must not miss one moment. And compared to the wish of doing something, it's important to always say, yes, I can as Obama would say. There is a, a whimsy horse that is beautiful, and I'd like to Has ride that ever it. happened to you? Have you uh, gone riding? Well, when I was a boy, very often. Now I'm a bit more prudent. But I like life. I like life um, 360 degrees. I like to experience life, and so uh, challenges for me don't look like challenges. But when you come from a small place in Italy, well, today, for example, where a lot of uh, we're surrounded by a lot of people from all over the world, but you come from a little place. I think uh, that you come from the heart of uh, Tuscany, in uh, that wonderful uh, regions, and there are a lot of people who probably have uh, been there and uh, got to learn it. But how could you come from a small place uh, which has 1,800 souls? I don't know exactly the number you had. And then to come from there and to become a reference uh, point at the international level for everybody in music, for anybody in the arts, but also as a person who inspires so many people. What what got you from where you started from to where you are today? I never thought and I don't think that it's important to be born in Manhattan or in the center of Rome to do something interesting in life. Uh, and you must remember that the father of contemporary philosophy, Immanuel Kant, was born in Königsberg, a very small uh, German town. He, didn't, he wasn't even curious to travel the world. He was so um, tied to his habits that people would set their clock when he walked by because he would always be in the same place at the same time. And this is very insightful. It teaches us that within us there is a universe, a world that could be exported, could be uh, a gift, 
And it's not important, as I said, to be born in a large city or in a very stimulating place. I believe it's important to find within ourselves the wish to live, the desire to do things, to make, create things. This is important. To be happy, you must create and give a meaning to life. But don't you think that uh, along the path of life, what is also important is to have opportunities to do things, because what every one of us would love to do that uh, also means uh, how many people are going to be involved also. But there are other factors uh, which influence uh, in all our, our lives, which make uh, a particular approach uh, possible or not. Well, missing opportunities, which is the reality for many people around the world, consists in the presence of unsurmountable obstacles. So the task of each one of us and of foundations and of governments is that of creating opportunities, the same opportunities for everybody, and basically um, be able to allow people to overcome obstacles. And that's precisely what you're trying to do, I suppose, with your foundation, with the work uh, that you're doing uh, in the foundation all over the world. Yes, the foundation was created for this task, that of creating opportunities for people who don't have them, recreate opportunities for those who don't have them, and help as much as it's possible. Of course, the foundation is a very complex organization. There is the goodwill of many people at work. And within the foundation, sometimes I feel as a character in a Dostoevsky novel. Maybe many of you read Demons by Dostoevsky. This book, the main character is Nikolaev Volodovic. is a character that doesn't have any special qualities. He is only a man who attracts people's attention. And so he is chosen, and everybody wants, them, wants him with them to do things. So that's a little bit the way I am. I'm not able to do anything in particular. God gave me the wish, the, the, the gift of attracting the attention, maybe. Now, you say you're not uh, capable of uh, doing anything. That is an understatement uh, that we listen to, but we find difficult to believe in it. Well, you know, to be in tune is not so extraordinary. I imagine almost everybody is. Well, I uh, am a journalist, and I could say, well, uh, Maestro uh, Bocelli has just said uh, that he's tone deaf. Would you believe that? <laughs> Yeah. Well, we could talk about this because, you know, to carry a tune, uh, you may be able to carry a tune up to 100 or 90, 95. Um, to reach 100, it's a little bit difficult. So sometimes you go out of tune. So the fact that I have a voice is not a merit in itself. I often say, I tell journalists often time when I get interviewed, that I believe that in human beings there is no merit, not just for me, for you as well. There is only the demerit, because the fact of having qualities to be good in this or that, it's a gift that you have have received from the heavens, you have to recognize that. For many people, there is the demerit of not having put in all the commitment to turn this gift into something extraordinary. I was born uh, able to carry a tune, and with this strange gift that surprises me every time, I see that people like to hear me sing. Of course, I'm happy for that, and I took advantage of it.
to create an instrument that can become important for the life of many people who are suffering. And this instrument is a foundation that carries my name and within which a certain number of people works and these people are very abled and they have a big heart and soul. Now, I think uh, that I'd like uh, to talk about one aspect uh, which you were talking about, that is to overcome difficulties and to overcome uh, limits. For example, uh, getting uh, opportunities in a place like uh, Haiti. Uh, let's start with that aspect with your foundation. I think you might uh, remember when you decided to set up a foundation, uh, when you decided to work in Haiti. Could you share that moment when you took that decision? Well, you know, there have been two decisive moments. The first one was the meeting with Father Rick. Father Rick is a hero of our times. He is a priest who went to Haiti many years ago. And when he saw the situation in this island, he thought he had to go back to the U.S., uh, get a degree from medical school, and go back there to live as a priest and a doctor, working in disastrous conditions for 12 hours a day. I was very impressed by a person like that, and I decided to help him. And then there was another defining moment, the earthquake in Haiti. I was awakened uh, with this terrible news. Veronica had already organized uh, aids that would get there with um, trucks and so on. And from that moment on, our wish to help these people became stronger and stronger. Well, that is probably the international part of uh, the Foundation's work. That is, uh, you try and uh, help uh, those whose freedom is limited in some way, who can't uh, create a life for themselves because of poverty, also because uh, there may be a disaster or a very difficult life. But then there is another aspect in the foundation in which you're working, and uh, you're working with MIT on uh, this in order to develop uh, technology uh, to help those who have other limits that they have to face. Yes, I chose to attempt um, something in a field in which I had some knowledge. So I thought of many people, uh, friends of mine too, uh, that um, are blind and live in large cities and they every day have the challenge of leaving home and going shopping, going to work going through the city with all the dangers and the difficulties that appear obvious, I thought that we could create a tool, a device, that would help them uh, move around. So a device that would help them move around, avoid obstacles, and find more easily what they were looking for. And then there is going to be another session uh, which is going to be devoted uh, precisely uh, to dealing with those aspects. Namely, we're going to be talking about uh, the developments in technology in this area. I think that today they will tell us about the steps that uh, medicine and technology is making uh, for giving the um, sight back to those who don't have it. And we all wish that. So on one side, I try to uh, hurry the uh, scientists uh, because I'd like they find this device. But at the same time, I hope I it's not necessary. I think that's uh, probably the nicest thing to wish for. But I'm sure that you'll be discussing uh, these aspects later on. But tell me, with this uh, limitation, you have uh, dealt with that in the same way as you've uh, met the other challenges in your life, and I suppose it's part of your character which has counted for a lot in that. Well, you see, it's difficult that somebody can always have a full glass. Uh, we all have limitations. There's something we'd like to have and we don't have. 
So we have to decide if we want to see the glass half full or half empty. I don't know if this is a limitation for my intelligence, but I keep on seeing my glass always half full or almost full. Well, how difficult was it for you, for your parents uh, to have to deal with uh, a young uh, boy with a very strong character like you? You've always been uh, someone with a strong character. You seem not to have any limitations. I don't know if these are just anecdotes uh, that are going around about you, but apparently you made life pretty difficult for them. Well, my father and my mother had a very different nature. My father was very anxious and uh, worried easily the way I am. And thank God my children are more prudent than I was as a child. So my father really suffered. Even when you called uh, the, um, the driver of the school bus, well, perhaps you can uh, tell them that uh, anecdote. Well, once my father received in his office the driver of the school bus, and he went there, and he told him that I was on a Vespa. My friend and I had were running faster than he was with the bus. And my father, thinking that it was my friend's imprudence, he promised to scold my friend and the driver had to say that I was driving. <laughs> and so I remember that evening, I went towards my father, I greeted him, and he pretended not to know me. <laughs> so I wondered what had happened. I didn't even think of that Vespa thing. So, of course, I took a, a lot of uh, swear words for, for a while. <laughs> well, of course, uh, we would all support your father because uh, I probably wouldn't have been uh, very happy to listen to that. But the same kind of uh, tenacity and the sense of uh, overcoming one's limits uh, you had uh, also with regard to your art, because there are lots of people who uh, have really made uh, sometimes life difficult for you and said, well, probably, basically, you should uh, not to really accede uh, to uh, this uh, type of uh, music, uh, being a performer for Italy, and that uh, you would never be able to go up to the level you have uh, reached. Uh, and there you are. Here you are today. Same uh, attitude that uh, follows you. You see, there is no career that doesn't have difficulties to overcome, and I'm sure everybody knows this. In my work, this is what happens at the beginning. When you show a certain talent, everybody pushes you and says, sing, sing, sing. And so you have to sing in school because then you're able to waste a little time during the class time, you know. You have to sing in a church on Sunday. You have to sing at every birthday party of your friends. If this activity then proceeds and you become a successful singer, from that moment on you start having issues because, as Oscar Wilde used to say, people forgive you everything except success. So, of course, there are difficulties, but they are part of the game. If it were easy, you know, Many people would do the same. <laughs> well, but I think we need to look ahead and not worry too much about what could be a hindrance. Uh, look at the open road you have ahead of you and run. We've still got a few minutes we can spend together. Now, you defined yourself as uh, uh, somebody who, and we didn't really accept the definition. I think you really are somebody who inspires. 
and uh, there are a lot of uh, people who really follow your actions and are inspired by them. But could I, you tell us who were the key people, who were the reference points for you? And perhaps it would be nice to hear from you uh, who uh, were the people who inspired you so we can round off the discussion. Well, I was lucky enough to have next to me a person that I describe my mentor, um, a second father for me. This man was a self-taught man. Uh, he learned by himself and he became the director of the bank in Laiatico, in my uh, town. He knew seven languages, he had an immense culture. He retired quite early, and from that moment on, he was my friend. He loved culture, books. He was very happy to study with me. And thanks to him, I know that little that I know. What I know, I owe to him. Uh, on the artistic uh, level, my idol has always been Franco Corelli. When I met his voice, it was like love at first sight. I fell in love with him as an artist, as a singer. And from that moment on, I thought in some area of my brain, I started thinking of emulating him and becoming a singer. Yeah, those are the key people in our lives. They're the people who really uh, help us to plot our lives. We've come to an end. <coughs> You're here. You left us uh, with a very strong message yesterday with your uh, art, uh, your singing. What is the message you want to leave uh, to all the people here, people who've come from all over the world, uh, who've listened to, to you, and who will continue along uh, their paths, but who really believe uh, in the importance of uh, meeting uh, with history and who will be motivated by this encounter? Well. I'd be too proud if I thought I would give a message to the people that are here, and I'm sure everybody who's here are people that are quite accomplished in their work. I just want to thank you all for uh, being so patient as to listen to me, um, and I hope I will meet you soon in other places where, instead of speaking, we sing. That is a really nice message to us with. Thank you. Thank you to you, Maestro Bocelli. It was a pleasure. The end of our first part of the session. Now those who signed just for the first part are kindly requested to leave us because we have to give the space for those who signed for the second part. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Grazie. Vi raggiungo fra un attimo.